You know what happens when you Google FGC SA? Great. As a kid, video game arcades were like something of fantasy. Those brightly cut lights, that ambient arcade sound, or just the sights of seeing all these people playing video games all at the same time. The place was even aptly named Wonderland. Now back in the day, there definitely wasn't a scarcity of arcades. While others existed, the Wonderland franchise was probably the biggest arcade franchise in the entirety of Cape Town. As of 2010 though, only two arcades see any regular activity, those in Elmwood City Mall and Canal Walk Mall, the last of which we'll be briefly exploring today. <music> that player was constructed in 2000, bursting over 400 stores, a refreshing outdoor scenery and emphasis on lavish lifestyle, my expectations were pretty high for its arcade, and to an extent, it didn't disappoint. Initially, Canal Walk decided to run its own arcade called Great Escape. It had some new games that we'd never seen before, like a Ridge Race at full scale, Beast Busters 2, and my personal favourite, Hyper Bishy Bashy. It suffered from two major flaws though. Firstly, the system that it ran on. And in order to play, you had to purchase this card, and then load credits onto that card before you could access any of the games. Wonderland used a very simple token system. You purchase coins and you use those coins as a machine. GG. One token cost one rand and a traditional game costs about one token. So it was one token, one play. Great Escape on the other hand, its card cost like 20 rand and the cheapest game was 3 rand. This was really problematic, since the majority of the arcade participants came from lower to mid income households. So, creating a monetary barrier was really detrimental to the entire scene, especially since the most enticing characteristic of the arcade was its accessibility. It didn't matter who you were, where you're from, as long as you were down to play or had some cool tech to show, you were cool at the arcade. I'm not even kidding when I say that there are legit homeless kids that have some crazy tech at KOF. Great Escape shut down and was replaced with Wonderland sometime in 2006-2007. And things got a lot better from then. We got some of the then new games like House of the Dead 4, Time Crisis 4, DDR Extreme, and finally the staples that everybody was looking for. SD, Metal Slug 3, Neo Geo's Double Dragon, Snow Bros, and arguably the most popular fighter at the time, King of Fighters 2002. From an FGC standpoint though, we hadn't seen a new game in ages. KOF 2003 was poorly received, the Neo Wave cab that we got had four buttons and none of them were mapped correctly. We had vanilla SF3 but nobody really played it, and eventually the popularity of 2002 started to fizzle out. Funnily enough, the game that killed parts of the OG FGC kept the arc alive a little longer. During the time that SNK stopped making annual releases, newer players were attracted to these KOF hacks, claiming to be the next installment or a new edition of a previous game. And these games were super busted. Full meets again? Oh, we got those. Game breaking new moves, glitches, do times 10 extra damage, switch characters in between the match. You name it, ho oh, we got him. Since their release, more and more of these caps started rolling in, replacing almost every other non-hacked KOF game in the arcade. And that was around 2008-2009. And since then, we didn't really get any new games. By the early 2010s, the arcade was pretty dead. To my surprise, however, in 2013, Wonderland actually got an AE and KOF 13 cat. Unfortunately, both run really poorly, as if they were being run on hardware from 2001. To add insult to injury, AE is set to a single round with a match time of 30 seconds. KOF 13 has uncanny load times, and it's set to 30 seconds as well. The latest fighter that they've added is KOF 99, with a legendary 3 token cost and a missing D button. 
Anyway, I guess it isn't all bad. I'm glad people in 2017 can still access an arcade experience. There are so many places where that isn't even an option. Given that Canal Walk gets quite the substantial daily traffic, and has a huge unoccupied space near its food courts, there's always some kind of event happening there. In fact, the last mini expo they had had some free to play cabs available. I'm gonna check the website how to play. I don't, I don't play this game, dude. This uh, game is uh, awesome. Oh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna get the tech from Game FAQs, man. Well, oh, I mean that one too. Oh, the yo, yeah. dude, the combos, dude. But I'm training for ten years. <laughs> oh, for ten years. Right. Yo. So while the arcade doesn't see as many bodies as it used to, there definitely is still some interest for fighting games, as evidenced by the awesome players that keep this scene alive. But that's a tale for a different time. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.